Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nadia. Thank you very much for your presence. Uh, and now let us start uh, our uh, uh, lectures. We have uh, four speakers, and uh, at the end we will have uh, Dr. Amr for a short presentation uh, about the, the uh, uh, Central Directorate, and we will have a voice note from uh, Professor Iman Sot. Uh, I will present the presenters in an alphabetical order, uh, Dr. or Professor Abdullah Adan, he will talk about the clinical research in the era of uncertainty and experience from Saudi Arabia during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Then Dr. Amin Abdelbaei, he will talk about uh, scientific aspects to be considered in COVID-19 research. Dr. Dea Marzou uh, will present the experience of COVID-19 research reviewing in Ain Shams uh, uh, University, Faculty of Medicine of Ain Shams. And Finally, according to the uh, alphabetical order, uh, Dr. or Professor Tamer Hifnawi will present hypothesis testing and the type of errors in clinical research. Although we, uh, I presented them in an alphabetical order, but effectively we will start by Professor Tamer, and then we will have uh, Professor Dea, Professor Amin, and uh, finally, akhiran wa laysa akhiran, Professor uh, Abdal. Uh, just one thing I will mention that uh, we need, uh, if uh, anybody wants to ask a question, uh, please uh, do uh, two things. First, you have to write the question in the chat, and the second, you uh, need to mention for whom you are directing your question. Thank you very much, and uh, wishing you a good evening and a, a fruitful and valuable uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so please one uh, thing i would like to uh, to say to dr amra i'm sorry i forgot your name to welcome <laughs> thank you okay um you are very kind and very gentle thank you uh, okay uh, professor tamir please okay you share uh let us hear to uh, professor uh Tamer. the floor is you uh, joining uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, I'd like to express my thanks to Hendrik, the Central Administration of Policy and Health De Development for this opportunity. I'm going to talk today about uh, uh, an important topic, which is the hypothesis testing and types of error in clinical research as a start or as a, uh, to pave the road for the main objective of our meeting today. As we can see, or as we noticed in the previous uh, few days, uh, a lot of articles have been uh, uh, written on the amounts of uh, paper that have been published on COVID-19 from the beginning of the year till now. It reaches 23,000 uh, paper, published paper, according to what's written by Jeffrey Brenard in this uh, article on the 13th of May. Um, at the beginning of the, uh, the epidemic, uh, it was advised not to use the carpofen and Silexo did. And now, uh, on the 28th of May, we, uh, uh, it is recommended now to use this uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. And there is studies that uh, state that they are having antiviral properties against COVID-19. The famous uh, Lancet paper, which was uh, published regarding the solidarity study of the WHO, which uh, advised or concluded not to use hydroxychloroquine on the 2nd of June, the Lancet uh, issued an, uh, an article that they, there is a concern. And I think yesterday they retracted the article. The very interesting that then the WHO resumed the hydro hydro hydroxychloroquine again after stopping it, uh, the very interesting uh, article that was published, I, I think yesterday, in the New England Journal of Medicine that was conducted, it was a randomized trial and conducted on 800 uh, study participants, concluded that there is no value of using hydroxychloroquine. I would like to start from here to ask a question. Is smoking cigarettes safe? A person told me that I smoked cigarettes for 30 years and I suffered no disease. Therefore, smoking cigarettes is safe. 
Another guy said I smoked cigarette for two years and I had bronchi bronchitis which turned to chronic condition. Now I discovered lung malignancy. Therefore, smoking cigarette is damaging to your health. So we have here a hypothesis. Who are we going to believe? We have two hypotheses. Smoking cigarettes are safe and smoking cigarettes are not safe. We need to design a study at how. Dr. X observed 100 smokers and health problem was found among 800 of them. Only 200 had no health problems. Therefore, smoking cigarette is damaging to your health. Wait, Dr. Y observed 2,000 smokers and health problem was found among 800 of them. 100, 1,200 non-smokers are healthy and our conclusion is smoking cigarette does not affect your health. Who are we going to believe? Imagine that you are invited to the famous show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? and you are confronted with the one million United States dollars question. This is uh, the situation now. You are given a closed box and you have been told that the box contains 100 bulls, a mixture of white and black bulls. And the question, is there an equal number of white and black bulls in the box? And you have two answers with one million dollars waiting for your answer, your correct answer. Don't panic. You are going, you just try to organize your thought. All what you have to do is to choose from only two answers. The two answers are there is equal number of white balls and black balls, and the other is there is unequal number of white and black balls. For facilitation, you have been given two options, facilitation uh, for you. You have been allowed to take 10 balls from the box while being blindfolded. Probably this will help you to make a correct decision. Try hard to steer the balls before selecting the 10 balls. Now you look at your balls and count them, and here is what we found, eight black balls and two, eight, two white balls. What can this tell you about the number of balls in the box? Another frustration has been allowed by the program organizers. They allowed you to contact the statistician and that's what he said. If the box truly contain equal number of white and black balls, 11 possible results can be obtained if you draw 10 balls at a random and here they are. Here what Oh, these are all the options that could be present if you, um, if you uh, try to select balls from the box. This is what we, uh, we are actually what we got. Eight black, eight black balls and two white balls. Then he added that although the test results are possible, all, all the, these results are possible, the chance or the probability uh, of occurrence of each is not the same. Some are less likely to occur, and then he calculated the probability of obtaining all options. And here are a, a table that shows the probability. Actually, our situation is the third situation, eight black balls and two white balls, and the probability of obtaining such uh, options was 4.39, which is less than 5%. The sample you have is eight balls and two white balls, according to the, your friend and biostatistician. The probability of obtaining such a sample from this box in which the number of white and black balls are equal. So our hypothesis is the number of white and black balls are equal. Is 4.39, which is less than 5%. So the, this probability is very low. The probability of having equal number is very low and you have, will have only 4.3% chance to obtain uh, this, uh, this finding that they are equal. So if you decide to reject the idea, there is only 5% risk of being wrong. So you decide to reject the idea that the box contains equal number and accept the alternate idea which is that the box contain unequal number of balls at the 5% risk. Congratulations, you did it. And you got the $1 million uh, prize. So a hypothesis in statistics is a claim or a statement about some population or parameter. It's basically a good guess. The hypothesis may or may not be 
accepted. There is only one way to find out. That's what we are trying to figure out. The research process begins with a hypothesis about the relationship between two occurrences. People who smoked are more likely to get lung cancer than people who do not. Or postmenopausal women treated with hormone replacement therapy are less likely to have myocardial infarction, myocardial infarction um, uh, than those who are not, uh, are not taking these uh, hormones. So the research hypothesis in, uh, is an assumed answer to the study question. The study has either to accept the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis. And this is very important. We are not conducting our study to, to, uh, to, to say that our hypothesis is true or false. We are just accepting or rejecting the hypothesis. And this could be changed according to the situation or according to the, uh, what's uh, present in our hand from uh, technology or in a specific field in the study. After formulation of the research hypothesis in scientific methodology, the research hypothesis is not tested directly. Usually we test the null hypothesis and it is uh, presented with H0. The null hypothesis is usually that there is no difference and we are conducting our study to accept or to reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, we are going to accept the alternative hypothesis, which is the study hypothesis. And this depends on the p-value. If the p-value is less than 0.05, uh, this is the type 1 probability. We conclude that the null hypothesis will be rejected. And if the p-value is more than 0.05, this indicates that the probability uh, uh, um, uh, of error is high and we can reject the null hypothesis. We have two types of error in clinical research, the alpha error and the beta error. In the alpha error, uh, in both of the, the alpha error depends on the p-value, the, the traditional level of 0.05 are used for statistical significance and the lower is the better. It indicates the probability of rejecting a statistical, hy a statistical hypothesis tested when in fact the hypothesis is true. So we reject a true null hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that there is no difference and I'm going to reject it and it was true. So rejecting true hypothesis Rejecting true hypothesis is called alpha error or type 1 error. We use the abbreviation ART. A stands for alpha, R rejecting, and T true. ART, the famous TV channels present in the uh, satellites in the Middle East, uh, Middle East region. However, the beta error or type 2 error is the probability that the test will accept the hypothesis tested when in fact it is false. It measures the power of the test and the power equal one minus the beta error. The power of the test, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false. So beta error is accepting false hypothesis. If you accept full hypothesis, this is called beta error or type two error. And here we are talking about the null hypothesis and we use the abbreviation buff for uh, denoting beta error. B is the beta and A accepting F, the false hypothesis. Here is, is, is an example. In a randomized controlled trial of drugs, it may can be concluded on the basis of the results that the new treatment is better, when in fact it is not better than the standard of treatment. I'm sorry for talking quickly, but I have 15 to 20 minutes. This is why I'm, I am, I'm not giving yani, uh, a lot of space for um, explaining or giving um, more examples. In this example here, what is a, our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis, there is no difference between the two drugs. The results of this study state what? That the new treatment is better. And this is wrong. So we reject a true hypothesis. We reject a true hypothesis that, says, that state that there is no difference. So rejecting true hypothesis is a type one error. On the other hand, a new treatment that is actually effective. So our null hypothesis here is there is no difference. 
and the alternative, there is difference. The new treatment is better. But the study, our study stated that the new treatment is actually effective, may be concluded to be ineffective. So we accepted here the null hypothesis, and this is wrong. So we accepted false hypothesis, buff. This is a type 2 error. In type 1 error, we assume that the new treatment is better than the standard of care. In fact, there is no difference between them. So we, we got a false positive result, ART. This guy is pregnant, and this is false. On the other hand, type 2 error, which is the false negative, we assume that the new treatment is equal in effect into the standard of care. In fact, there is new, the new drug is better. So we got a false negative result. This gentle doctor told uh, this lady that she's not pregnant and what we are seeing here is just abdominal gases, distension. And this is false negative. The lower the p-value, the lower the type 1 error, the higher the significance of the test, and uh, a p-value of less than 0.05 is better uh, than a p-value. Uh, 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 we are going to reject the null hypothesis in this state, and we go, if we got a p-value of 0 0.001, so our level of error is very low in having type 1 error. Uh, to decrease the type 2 error, we have to increase the power of the test, and this uh, is a statistical uh, uh, procedure that can be calculated, uh, and we can control this by many factors, uh, which the most important is the sample size. Remember that lowering the p-value will increase the statistical significance, will decrease the type 1 error. But we have to select the suitable test of significance to calculate uh, our p-value. We have here a very important point, I'm almost done, uh, uh, about clinical significance versus statistical significance. Clinical significance has little to do with statistics and is a matter of clinical judgment, expert opinion. It answered the question, is the difference between groups large enough to be worth achieving? Studies can be statistically significant, yet clinically insignificant and vice versa. And here is the famous uh, pyramid of evidence. We can see that the editorial or uh, expert opinion is at the base. However, the highest level of evidence is obtained by the systematic review uh, of uh, randomized double blind, triple blind controlled trial using meta analysis. And uh, the highest, the, the top of the pyramid have the highest reliability and the uh, risk of bias decrease at the base of the. Uh, period. Uh, this is my reference. I would like to end my presentation uh, by telling that, that, is, that we are conducting our study to accept or to reject study hypothesis and it's not uh, our aim to prove that it is true or not true and this is, can be, um, I can describe what we are finding now on contradictory finding from different studies. Thank you very much and I hope I didn't exceed my time to try. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. As usual, presentation is an excellent one, although it's a very difficult uh, uh, topic. Thank you very much. It was clear, and I think everybody benefits from it. Uh, if anybody has any question regarding the presentation of uh, Professor Tamer, kindly... Uh,